All right. So, yes, welcome. As I sort of mentioned, this flight uh, is on dependencies and how to manage them. Um, it's um, going to be a very quick sort of short talk about it. It's going to be interactive. There's going to be two exercises that you're going to be doing. Um, if you can't get to the mirror link or you want to just chill and listen, um, don't, join a, don't join a breakout room you're assigned to. Just stay on the main group and um, you'll get to spend some time with me. Other than that, uh, go out to the groups and discuss and talk and do the exercises I give you. Um, and we will uh, we'll have a lot of fun. So again, the mirror board will, the chat link, the link will be in the chat window. Um, contact the uh, two co-hosts here. I have uh, Richard and Theo who are producers helping me out. Right on guys for doing that. And um, let's get started. So essentially, uh, I do training on forecasting and metrics and flight levels. And one of the more constant issues that I always come up against is, is dependencies. If I ask the number one problem for companies I'm working with, what they want fixed in their organization, it's dependencies. And I find it impossible to do forecasting and impossible to track reliable metrics unless I have a good grounding and understanding of the dependencies that are existing in an organization. So, um, there are no slides in this talk. Uh, it's all going to be here in Miro. Um, it's all going to be shared on my screen here. Um, so if you want any more information or you want uh, any of the tools I talk about, just email me, follow me on Twitter if you, if you want that sort of grief and harassment. Um, and after the session, I'll be in the Sokoko, the departures lounge, answering questions. So um, you can ask them throughout the call, but uh, I'll be spending at least an hour in the uh, departures lounge after this talk to answer any further questions that you have. Okay. All right. So the everyone see the dependency uh, definition on my screen. Yep. Yep. So yes, yes. believe it or not, the the best document, the best research I found on dependencies was a paper that was written um, in about uh, 2012, presented in 2012, written in 2011, uh, was a, uh, a set of people out of New Zealand and Australia, um, uh, Diane Strode, the main uh, lady who did this, and she went and she documented all the different types of dependencies that exist in the software development world, the agile software development world specifically. And this is sort of eye-opening because when we talk about dependencies, we're, we're most often talking about team A has to hand off something to team B. But it's a lot more complex than that. You know, a dependency, the definition of it is presented in this paper, and I quite like it, is it's the progress of one action relies on something prior to it. And uh, what uh, she did was come up with a way of naming different types of dependencies from how you should think about them to manage them. And she roughly come up with three, knowledge dependencies, task dependencies, and resource dependencies. And you're gonna ask sort of why that matters. Well, we're gonna do an exercise. Uh, let me just bring you to me here. We're gonna do an exercise on the different types of dependencies and why it matters. Because the four types, and I know she said three, but I've added one. And I find this one is particularly important to manage uh, in Agile and it's what causes a lot of stress. But number one is that it's a knowledge dependency. We can't start or complete something until we learn. So that's the classic sort of type of uh, the reason we're in Agile is that we can shorten the time to learn new things and take a different pathway. So knowledge dependencies are our inability to start or complete something until we actually learn something new. So it's an investigative sort of dependency. Then there's a, the typical task dependency, which is the common one we're used to in team handoffs. The, team, uh, the database team has to finish the database schema before the API team can actually do a request against that database. That's a task dependency. And it's, um, we can't start or complete something until something else has been built or done. Uh, then there's a resource dependency. We can't start or complete something until we get access to. Now this one is the classic case of constraint. 
So we have a certain type of uh, resource, which it's too expensive, or we haven't done yet. We haven't spread the knowledge of how to do something across the entire company. So those ones are particularly gnarly if they're external to your company. So in a lot of cases, the network firewall uh, set up definitions is done by an external company or done by an external group. You wouldn't give every team have a, a network firewall uh, access control person on every software development team. But when you set up your, uh, your cloud hosting, uh, you're gonna need to open up some firewall ports and stuff, stuff like that. That's a resource dependency and the product dependency. So if you can think of one uh, dependency, which is often missed in our world, it's the fact that we shouldn't even consider starting something unless we can do it for multiple products at a time. Now, what I sort of see is uh, a, a lot of dependencies get missed. The other dependencies get managed because there's sort of people worried about them. Uh, but I often see um, companies have a problem with coordinating what features and what should be chosen, started and attempted across multiple products. Uh, and that's uh, what uh, that, that sort of was, epiphany was what led me to flight levels in the first place because it was one of the few, <laughs> going to sort of slap someone's hand. We'll get to that. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, we're um, in, in flight levels, we have sort of three levels of definition and flight level three uh, is really a product dependency management area. It's, it's, it's deciding that as a group, as a set of products, we wanna do something that we're going to do. So if you haven't looked at flight levels, um, you'll sort of see that each of these different dependencies really get managed at a different flight level. Product dependencies get managed at the very highest level and strategy and should we do this as a group? So should we do the Windows product and the Mac product at the same time? Um, and then flight level two is where we manage the task and the resource dependencies. And the knowledge dependencies it tends to be run by the teams. Going to hurt someone if you don't stop touching it until I start the exercise. So yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, in a second, I'm gonna send you to some breakout rooms. And what you're quickly going to do in your breakout room, um, you'll see that the group one Group one's gonna stay on the main here. If you don't join a breakout room, you get to play with me here on group one. There'll be four other rooms set up, group two, group three, and group four. So when you go to, uh, when you go to those rooms, um, as a group, I want you to discuss, read the different types of features that might be on a backlog here, and work out whether it's a knowledge dependency, a task dependency, a resource dependency, or a product dependency, and how you tell and why it matters. Um, and sort of maybe uh, if you have any time left of the five minutes I'm going to give you, um, have, uh, have a conversation around um, some examples that have happened in your company. So you're going to get five minutes. Your job is to find the two that fit into each of the, uh, the dash boxes from the examples. Um, if you don't want to join a breakout room, you can stay here with me and we'll work in this room. Uh, other than that, you're going to be called back with a, about a minute remaining. Um, and um, away we go. So I think Richard and Theo, now's that time to hit the, um, the button. Um, uh, we will call you back. Good luck. All right, so are the others coming back yet? Did we, did we close the rooms now, did we? Yep, we've closed the rooms. Nice. How long does it have till they return? So everybody's back. Everyone's back. Welcome back, everyone. Um, okay. Um, any epiphanies at all? I saw lots of good pro. Uh, looks like everyone got to a solution. Um, any comments from any of the groups around which which two were hardest to determine the difference between? So the we two, didn't which I, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Troy. I was going to say we didn't discuss it as a group, but for me, I look at task dependency and resource dependency, and I sometimes in my head think think of them as the same thing. Yeah. Probably those, that's those my are... former project management background coming into yeah. play. Yeah, they are. They are. And um, the difference between them and how you can tell and why it matters. 
is a task dependency is something that could be done by anyone, it just hasn't been scheduled yet. And a resource dependency is something that you often need to schedule in advance because it's not done by you or your team. Mm -hmm. So when you're managing dependencies in a stand-up meeting or if you've got a scrum of scrums or in some coordination sort of function, the ones which will nail your coffin will be resource dependencies. They're dependencies on other people that needs lead time. And uh, so a task dependency is that we can't build A until we've built B. And a resource dependency is um, we can't start a complete until we get someone else to do X. <laughs> and so that's, that's uh, why um, the first thing you probably want to do when you're sort of working out a forecasting schedule for a piece of work that you're thinking of doing is ask the question, um, will we need help from anyone outside of our team to deliver this feature? And if the answer is yes, you want to start documenting it and you want to start making sure that you give some forewarning to the people who are going to need to do that work. So resource dependencies just have a, high, um, a longer lead time to coordinate and task dependencies are normally just um, a lack of resources to do it yourself. Um, but they're very, very confusing uh, things to do. So that's why it matters. I think what we're trying to do, first of all, is find all the, the external resource dependencies, external people that are going to need to be involved to do it first and nail those. Um, mm. We shouldn't even consider starting until we've done our knowledge dependencies and our task dependencies. It's really about setting clear prioritization about what should be started next. So each of these different types of dependencies, you'll have a different way of managing them. And what I find is we often, when we talk about dependencies in Agile, we're talking about just one very particular type of dependencies, which are you know, roughly these task and resource dependencies. So yes, absolutely agree. They're very closely linked, um, just um, a bit more difficult to, um, they've got different practices and different lead times. And that's why it's in your interest to categorize your dependencies based on those. All right, you all did so well on that. I'm going to um, give you the next one to do. This is a, um, a same sort of deal, except there's um, six questions. And in each of these questions, there's three possible answers here. One of them's bad, the worst thing you could possibly do. One of them is a stepping stone to actually getting started in dealing with dependencies in that role. And there's one which I'm gonna put scare quotes around best. <laughs> um, and it's probably unachievable or too expensive to achieve. So what I want you to do as a group is to uh, read the question, capturing dependency history. Uh, let's do one together. Capturing a dependency history. What is a dependency? Is that bad, okay, or best? Sounds bad. 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 You're, ex you're experts already. Um, capture dependencies and their impact. Bad, okay, or best? Best. Uh, best. 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 Good, you're nailing it. And capturing dependencies at all, just actually knowing that their dependencies yeah. exist, that's, that's, your, okay. uh, that's your okay. All right, um, gonna give you seven minutes to do this. Um, don't overthink it, it really is as simple as what I just did. Remember, the rule is when you move a sticky, say why you're moving it. Don't just sort of move it blindly and sit there idly. You're all got access to Zoom. Unmute yourself and chat to each other. All right, let's go out to the breakout rooms for seven minutes. Okay, so everyone's back from the breakout rooms. All right. Okay, any brave group want to uh, have their, uh, their work examined? Or do I pick one at random? Yeah, go for group four. Group four? Yeah, group five. <laughs> All right, question first. four and question four, five. Four and <laughs> okay, capturing dependency history. What is a dependency? Obviously bad. Capture dependencies at all. Recognize they exist. Capture dependencies and their impact. That's the gold standard. I'll show you a quick way of doing that in a second. Dealing with dependencies. So this is a controversial one. Now, this is the doctrine that everyone talks about. Dependencies are bad and we need to eliminate them all. And I don't believe that. I hmm. actually think that 
um, this is the order I would have put them in. I think the goal of actually trying to remove all dependencies is fraught with danger, it's expensive, and what ends up happening is you uh, only remove the dependencies that you currently know about for the features you currently have. And the moment that you add a new technology or have a new constraint or move to a new cloud vendor, your dependencies change. If you look at dependencies for those four types that I said above, trying to rid them all will just erode all value because you'll just start doing really easy, simple things that the teams currently form can do, which are really low innovation. So start off by just removing the easy to fix dependencies, the ones that you know are cheap and easy to fix just through uh, sheer practice uh, process, and then start tracking which ones are still occurring, their frequency and their impact, and start working on the highest impact ones that are the most frequent first. Planning with dependencies, ignoring dependencies. Yeah, we can all agree that's the status quo. Uh, identify the obvious dependencies during planning. And again, anytime there's an all in it, I'm out. <laughs> so right. I don't, I actually think that um, I don't have a best for planning with dependencies. I think the best you can do at the moment is an okay, which is the ones that you know are you're going to hit for sure based on historical practice. But I, um, I put sort of identifying all dependencies over in the, in the bad column because I think that you're just going to spend weeks and you're still going to get it wrong. You're going to find new ones the moment that you start doing the work. Um, start work when? Start work that will immediately block. Obviously bad. Uh, start work when all teams are ready. And this is correct. This is the way I would have done it. I would have said the best is that the, maybe the best you can do at the moment, rather than identifying all teams which are ready, is to actually go and make sure that at a minimum, the next team that's going to get it from you is actually aware and willing to accept it and, mm -hmm. and, and on board with being able to do it once they do get it. Which brings me to handoffs. Keep the work you started finished and finished a secret. Don't tell anyone you've done it. Great way for it to sit in a backlog idle and everyone saying, oh crap, I didn't realize that was ready to go. Inform the next team uh, when you finish something. That's, that's the typical sort of way it's done, but then all of a sudden it sits in a backlog while they realize and have to work out, oh yeah, we better get that scheduled. That means delay. The best thing you can do is the moment that you start work, tell the team downstream that we've started this work and we expect it, anticipate it to be delivered by, um, you know, uh, in two weeks' time, next week, something like that. Give them some indication and update them when you know that's going to sort of change. And what to pull next? Something easy and fast. That's the default. If we're promoting high velocity and high throughput, that's exactly what you will get. You will just get people pulling work based on how fast and easy it is to do, not with value, not with priority, not with what's going to break a dependency chain. So... The thing you can do to amplify the impact of dependencies is to focus people on doing more faster. If you set up that constraint, that, that psychology and organization, you have actually made dependencies worse. So the best thing you can do uh, to manage dependencies is free people to make a decision uh, on what to pull next based on value, based on um, outcome. And, uh, Oh no. Oh no, we lost him. Yeah, we do seem to have lost uh, Troy just at the last minute People there. Hyper focusing oh, on uh, doing twice the work in half the time. Something. Am I back yet? Yeah. You're back. I'm back. I'm sorry about that. I got excited. Yeah. Maybe um, it's the excitement of coming to the end of, the, of our time to together. So what, uh, so, what was the last thing you heard? Hello? Or did you get. No. Um, so we're just on question six. Did you hear question five? Yeah, we've got yep. question six. Okay. So the point I want to make is by setting up a psychology and organization to do more work faster and not putting a focus on outcome value, people will pull really easy, simple work that's advantageous to their local team. And that's going to amplify your dependency impacts. So what I want you to start thinking about is um, the best thing you can do as a coach or a manager in a set of teams 
is to make sure that you highlight why work is being started from an outcome and uh, um, perspective. And uh, otherwise, what they're going to do is uh, pull work in a lo local local order. All right, so that was just a bit of um, just a bit of the practices, so a quick way of getting you across those practices. What the question you're going to have is, um, how do I do that? I keep you keep saying do the most highest important sensitive factors um, in the mirror sheet, and there's an empty one for you there to work on. Um, is a typical tool I use with teams. I get them just to brainstorm different types of dependencies and put them in a zone based on how often we get impacted by that dependency. And when we do get impacted, how long it takes to resolve and get them to start sort of throwing stuff around. Which dependency um, would, is most important <clears throat> um, to resolve? Which zone? Dependencies which impact you often for a long period of time. These are the three dependencies that you make sure you do everything you can to resolve and fix only in the high frequency, high impact zone. Um, and um, yeah, so this will be, this zone is the one that you want to work on first. This is the zone where you just want to ignore and just sort of keep an eye on. The other two, toss a coin. But until you've actually, if you've got a project or a feature or a product which has a lot of dependencies in this high, high zone, you need to, you've got work to do. You need to solve it. Um, and that should give you a way of actually um, um, understanding which one's the most important to fix. So what I do with the teams, uh, you know, every month or so is I go back and I create post-it notes of impacts I knew that happened place them roughly onto this zone and in the retrospective with the team, start talking about it, get them to revive, refine the position and come up with ideas for ways that we won't be impacted by these dependencies again. All good? So I think um, I'll be over in the question and answer session. I've got plenty of little tools and facilitation sort of ideas like this around dependencies. So please, please, um, just uh, remember my uh, my contact details and email me. So either come to the uh, departures lounge after this, um, um, uh, e email me, contact me on Twitter. Love to talk about sort of dependencies because I think they are the biggest impacting uh, issue to metrics and forecasting that we can solve. All right, all good. Yep. Yes. Thank you very much. All good. Thank you very much, Troy. Goodbye, everybody.